What is up, everybody? It's your boy, Young Fizz, aka Mr. Dope Status on Instagram, and welcome back to a, another video. So today, I'm going to be talking about the Antelope Audio, Cranbourne Audio, as well as my Neve Summit Mixer, the 5059, and how it all integrates inside of Pro Tools to maximize your efficiency when working with a DAW. So again, I'm going to be talking about the Antelope Audio, Cranbourne Audio, as well as my Summit Mixer, and how to set up the I.O. inside of Pro Tools so you are maximizing your efficiency inside of the DAW. So if that is something that you're interested in, then stick around to the end of the video as I'm going to be showing you step by step on how to achieve this so you can go ahead and make your own template and save it and all that good stuff. It's your boy Young Fizz. Hit that like button, subscribe, and don't forget to turn on the bell notifications. Let's go ahead and get right into the video. And also don't forget to check the links in the description below if you're interested in mixing mastering services or the machine course that I have out. All right, so let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the Orion Studio control panel here, and then I'm gonna go ahead and get into the Pro Tools I.O. as well. But first things first, we have the Pro Tools control panel. So basically, I did a video on this before, but I do wanna show you the physical outputs here. So the preamp here is the physical outputs, one through 12. That's gonna correspond with what is actually physically that you can take a microphone and plug in or an instrument, whatever, you can plug in directly to the Orion Studio. So that is the physical connection, right? So that's gonna be your preamp, whether it's mic or the line or an instrument, right? So one through 12, again, physical preamps, you got one through four on the front, five through 12 on the back, which corresponds with the modeling mics as well. So EMU, which is emulation mics, you can plug those on the back five and access all different types of parameters as well. Now, if you see for this one right here, it says Thunderbolt Play. If you click the asterisk right next to it, it says DAW out. So these are the outputs of the DAW. So that means what, whatever's in the computer, you can send that audio wherever you want down below, whether it's to the headphones, whether it's to a summing mixer, which I'm gonna show you in a second, um, whether it's I'm using the Cranborn audio system. I'm gonna show you how to do that all right now inside of Pro Tools and in the control panel here. So the next thing is if you use USB play, then you only get 24 channels. Whereas Thunderbolt, you get more bandwidth, which you get 32 channels. So USB play, only 24 channels. Now I have my ADAT in right here. Then I have SPDIF, AFX out, which is internally in the software. And then down here, you have your mix one L slash R, which is going to be important to use with R verb inside of Pro Tools, which I'm going to go ahead and show you that in a second here. And as well as the other ones, Mix 2, Mix 3, Mix 4, but there's nothing really special about those. They're just virtual mixers. All right, so now that we have a basic understanding of how that works, let's go ahead and look at Pro Tools side of things here. Let's go to Setup. We're going to go to I.O. And then, as you can see here, you have the input, you have the output, bus, insert, mic pre, not really important, hardware delay. It's somewhat important to calculate your latency if you find out in milliseconds what your latency is. All right, so, but for now, we're gonna be focusing on the inserts and we're gonna start with building out the inserts because the inserts is important when using it with Pro Tools. Why is it important that we start with the inserts is because when we build out the inserts, everything is gonna be built around the inserts, right? Because the way Pro Tools inserts works is whatever goes out of Pro Tools, out of that insert, it has to go back in on that same channel. For example, if you go out of channel number three, you have to return back into channel number three just to create that round trip. All right, so let me go ahead and let's see here. Press OK, and I'm going to show you something here. Create a, a track. So this is what we don't want to see anymore. We don't want to see this basic stuff where it just says input one and two and, and all sorts of stuff. We want to be able to send audio no matter what for any students. That means anybody that comes in here, they're going to be able to route signal if they understand what the gear is called here. And so that's what I want to recreate with this setup. All right, so let me go ahead and delete this now that I don't need it. All right, so the first things first, we're going to go ahead and start with the Thunderbolt playback, right? So I'm just going to connect Thunderbolt playback. So remember, this is coming from my computer, which is, like I just mentioned, is standard inside of the Pro Tools application here. So that's going to be headphones. We're going to drag this to headphone two, just in case I'm having someone record with me. And then my monitor outputs, of course. And that's all I'm going to do. All right. So the next thing I want to do is go from three here. So three through 10 
is going to be the outputs coming from my DAW. Again, if you click the asterisk here, it's going to say DAW output. So I know, I know I'm coming from my DAW and I'm going to somewhere. Now, I want to send AFX 3 through 10 to my AFX in channels. So I'm taking 3 through 10. I'm highlighting it here. So I just click, hold down Shift, go down to 10. And I'm clicking and dragging it to number 1 on the AFX in. Now, you might be saying, well, why is he doing 1? Why don't he just go to 3? It's because if I come up here, effects, you're going to notice right here, it's going to say Thunderbolt playback number three. But that's going to be the first instance of it right here. So I just want to kind of keep it consistent, if that makes sense. All right, so that's going to be the first connection. All right, so now, again, it's going from my computer into the AFX. And that's going to go to the input of the AFX, right? And now I can test this if I want to. If I just uh, you know, load up a, an oscillator here. I can look at my meters and I go to AFX in. Uh, let me see, out and then in. I can see that signal is getting there. Let's go to AFX in, signal is getting there. And so now I want to get that signal into Pro Tools. And so, how do we get that signal into Pro Tools? It's by simply knowing where to route the signal. So now the signal is appearing right here on AFX out. And we're going to start with one through, I believe, maybe eight or so. So it's going to be one through eight. So if I drag that down here, I don't want to drag it to be right here. I want it to be a little bit longer, right? So maybe like starting from right here, because remember, Pro Tools, you have to skip the first two. So it should be not lined up. It should be just like this, right? So let's go ahead and look at Pro Tools now. So go back to Setup. We're going to go to I.O. We're going to go to Inserts. Now let's go ahead and start setting up Pro Tools a little bit. So right here, as I mentioned before, I don't need Channels 1 and 2 because Channels 1 and 2 is going to my monitoring system. So I don't need that channel. By default, I just it's not needed. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight it and delete it. Now, right here, it's already kind of set up for me. So into, I um, think I'm using channel, let's see, ends at channel 10. So channel 10, so these ones right here, I can rename these. So I'm going to rename these AFX, and I'm going to go to 9 and 10. So AFX 1-2. Now, why did I do AFX 1-2? Because let's just say, for example, I name it AFX, and I don't do any space, I do 1-2. It's going to put this L and R stuff. I don't like seeing that. I like to keep it simple. AFX, oops, AFX. 1-2, right? And so it, it names it nice and clean, all right? So going to the next one, AFX 3-4, right? And you don't have to click every time. You can just do AFX 5-6, hit tab, goes on to the next one, AFX 7-8. So now this is all nice and named for me. So AFX 1-2, 3 and 4, 5 and 6, 7, 8. All right, so that's perfect. And I can see that it's coming in right here on 8. So that's going to be number 10. So 8 should be 10. 8 should be 10. That's perfect. So that is all good. I have 1 through 8, all perfect. And if I go down here, I can see if it's a mono track, it's going to be named nice and neat. All right, so that's the first thing. So that's just using AFX in to Pro Tools, right? So AFX to DAW. Next, I have insert 11. Now, 11, I have my mono gamma here. And this is where I'm starting to use ADAT. So on my interface, I'm using uh, one, two, three, four. So basically, five channels of ADAT. So this is where I start to use my ADAT control. So I'm just going to go ahead and go in here. I'm going to switch this. Instead of stereo, I'm going to do mono. So the dialog pops up and it's saying, changing the format of a main path to mono will delete its subpaths. Would you like to continue? I'm going to hit OK. And I'm going to go ahead and select number 11. And that's going to be the output of, again, my insert. And that's going to go somewhere, right? So where is this going to go? So the output of 11 is going to go to my mono gamma, which is going to my ADAT, right? It's going to go to my ADAT and my Cranborn audio system. So I'm going to take 11. I'm going to drag that into number 1 here. Because slot 1, if I look right here on my, in my rack, 
Number one is where my Shadow Hills monogamma lies. So that's where that's going to be. Now, I have to get this back into Pro Tools somehow, right? So I'm going from the, my DAW out. The signal is now hitting the mono gamma. Now I got to get that mono gamma back into Pro Tools, and that's going to be the A at N here. So the A at N is going to be number one because that's what channel I'm using. Now I got to drag number one to channel 11. So bam. So that's going to be the A at again, A at N from, from the A at N into my Thunderbolt record. And then if you click the asterisk there, it says DAW N. So that's how I know that that's my DAW N. If you're using USB, you would do it to USB. But I'm using Thunderbolt, so that's why I'm dragging it into the number one slot right here on the TB record. So also, I can switch my input tab here. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete all these inputs here because I don't need them. I want to create my own path as I go. So I'm just going to say mono input path. We're going to call this mono gamma. Mono gamma. All right. And that's going to be input path number 11. So I'm going to put the Mono for number 11 here, and that's going to be my input tab there. All right, so that is cool so far. So let's go back to the insert tab here and see what else we have. So now I need to take another output somewhere. So now I'm using 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16, right? So now I'm going to take 12 and 13. I want to use that with my, let's see, I have. 542. So I'm going to take 12 and 13, and I'm going to plug this into number five. And I'm just going to drag it down here. And it's going to be the ADAT out, which is really going into the ADAT. So it's going from my TB playback to my ADAT. And again, it's going to be five. So this is going to be right here is going to be my uh, 542s. I got left and right channel. And then I'm going to do my SPL big which is going to be 14 and 15, I'm going to drag that right here as well. So that's going to be 7 and 8. So 12 through 15 is going to be my 542s and then SPL big. So let's go ahead and make that connection right back into Pro Tools, right? So again, the signal right now, if you're looking at it, if you're following along, the signal is going out of the DAW into the Cranborn audio system right here. Now I want to get that signal out of my ADAT. How do I do that again? I got to go to five and six and then seven and eight. And I'm just going to drag that right here starting on number 12, right? So it's going to go from one, five, six, seven, eight. Again, one, five, six, seven, eight. I left off on my mono gamma. So I'm going to be looking at Thunderbolt record number five. So five, I'm just going to go ahead and delete some of these so I don't get confused here. Create my own paths here. Let's, let's go ahead and create my own path. So I'm going to go ahead and do a new path. And I'm going to do two more. And then it's going to be stereo paths. And then I'm going to do auto create the sub path. So we're going to do create. And then as you see, it's going to go ahead and create me two more paths here. So this first one is going to be, again, it's going to be the uh, 542. So I'm going to call this Neve 542. And it's on 5 and 6. So 5-6. And then we're going to call this SPL big. SPL big 7-8. All right. So let me go ahead and double check this. So in 5 and 6 right here. It's not plugged into anything right now, but we know that it should be inserted on right here. 12 and 13, and then 14 and 15. And then my mono gamma is on 11. And did I create that? Not yet. So let me go ahead and do a new path. We call this mono gamma. And that's going to be the input on 11 here. So if I want to move that up, I can go input on number 11. All right, so that's going to be mono. And so everything should be lining up. So I just left off of, on channel uh, 15 right here. So if I look in here, I left off on channel 15. So if I do from here to here, you'll see that's eight. And that matches up perfect. 
All right, so everything is looking good so far. So the next thing I want to show you here is this 16 on output 16, because that's where I left off at is number 16. I'm going to send this to my mix channel, and we're going to bring that back in later on. But I just want to kind of set that up for what I'm about to show you in a second here. But basically, that mix channel is going to go to my R verb. So if I go to my mixer, you see that my reverb is on here, and I have it turned down so I don't get a double in effect. And then we're going to return that somewhere inside of Pro Tools later on. And so actually, let me go ahead and do that right now. So let's go ahead and say the virtual mix here is going to be right here. So that's going to be on 16 and 17. Right there, bam. So now I left off on number 17 through uh, 32. So I'm going to take 17 through 32. And now I'm going to plug this into my summing mixer. So it's going from out of the DAW, DAW out, into my summing mixer. And so my summing mixer lies right here on line outputs. Now, you got eight and eight, so two D subs, which is eight channels each, so a total of 16 channels. So I'm sending that out of 17 to 32. So I'm going to come over here to output. And this right here, number one and two, that's going to be default to the KRK. So I'm just going to call that KRK. Um, that's going to be the default output. And then right here starts with number three. We actually don't want this here. I'm actually going to start at 17 and 18. So I'm just going to delete pretty much all this right here. I really don't need that there. What I'm focused in on is 17 through 32. So I'm going to go ahead and do, uh, this is going to be the summing mixer. So I'm just going to call this S1-2, uh, right? And I'm going to keep going. So let me go ahead and go back here. So we're going to do S3-4, S5-6, S7-8, S9-10, S11-12, S13-14. Oops. And then S15-16. So that's going to be connected to my summing mixer. I have uh, that all hooked up there. So, and then we're going to talk about that in a second with this output three and four, because output three and four is going to be connected elsewhere in a second here. All right. So the next thing I want to look at is my physical channels of my inputs right here. So five through 12. So we're going to go ahead and set this up. So five through 12 is going to appear up right here. It's going to be starting with 17 through, uh, what is that? 20, I think 24, 25 ish. So I'm going to plug it in right here. So five and six is going to be my phantom. Seven and eight is going to be my drummer. Nine and 10 is going to be the summing stereo one. And then 11 and 12 is going to be my uh, stereo two for my summing mixer. And that's the cool thing about the Neve satellite is that it has two separate outs. For example, if I wanted to do maybe like the texture control on vocals, I can put some high end by engaging the, the switch here. And I can do drums have the blue and engage like the silk blue and process them separately. So that's a cool feature. So let me go ahead and label this before I get confused, right? So, so far I have my mono gamma on 11 and I'm just going to create some new paths here. Uh, do about, uh, about six stereo maybe. And we're going to do the auto create sub paths here. All right. So now what I want to do, I want to go ahead and name my inputs here. So right here, input number one, we're going to have the phantom and let me keep this consistent here. So phantom, and that's going to be five dash six. I'm just going to name the input here. And then we have, I've mentioned the drummer and that's going to be seven and eight. And then I mentioned my, uh, 50, 59. So we're going to know 50, 59. Uh, let's see one dash two. And then 50, 59. Actually, let me keep it consistent. So 50, 59, uh, that's going to be 9 and 10. And then 50, 59, 11 dash 12. So I got my drummer. I got my 50, 59. I'm missing a few tracks. Let's say a physical input is going to be, uh, call this the R verb. All right. So that is looking good there. And then I'm not sure what this is, but we're going to delete it for now. So I have my mono gamma, have my phantom, have my drummer, 5059, and the R verb return. So my phantom here is going to be hooked up on 
It looks like it's on 18 and 19. So we're gonna do 18 here and 19. All right, and then I'm just gonna go ahead and keep plugging them in from here. And then the R verb is returned on, let's see here. Looks like 16 and 17. So 16 and 17 for our verb. I'm gonna go ahead and move this over here to 16 and 17. So it's gonna be looking something like this here. So 16, 17, uh, 18 and 19. Uh, it's gonna make sure here, so 17. So this is kind of small to see here for me, but this is 27 and eight. Right here, that's the drummer, 20, 21. 2021. All right, that's cool. And so that is looking pretty good there. And so that's pretty much really the setup. All right, so now it looks like I have a couple more inputs to fill. So I'm gonna take one and two. I'm gonna plug that into record here, and then three and four, which is gonna cover my other inputs, which is gonna be right here. And then I'm gonna have a few tracks left over. So let me go ahead and input that into the system here, so I'm gonna do IO. We're gonna go to input and create some new paths here. Maybe about two more stereo auto create paths. So this is gonna be called A1-2 and this is gonna be A3-4. All right, so A1-2, 3-4 and now I gotta plug this in. So this is gonna be one and two here. So I'm on my input tab, one and two, and three and four is gonna be 26 and 27. So 26 and 27, I'm gonna plug that in right about there. And now that I have everything in here, I can rearrange it. So I want my mono gamma appearing up first. I want my A one and two, three and four, something like that there for the input. And then I want the uh, 5059 here, and then the R verb is gonna be last. Then I have my Phantom, then I have my Drummer, then I have my R verb. And then I go to Output, got my KRK, Output three and four. I'm not sure what this is, so we're gonna go ahead and delete it for now. So, bam. So that's looking good there. We're gonna press OK. So now when I come over here, I can send stuff wherever I wanna send it to. Basically, now that everything is set up, I wanna start testing everything out. So now what I wanna do, I wanna come in here, I'm gonna create an aux track, and I'm gonna go ahead and put a signal generator on here. And do this here, so signal generator. And the first thing I'm gonna go ahead and do is insert a, actually I wanna do a, yeah, an insert. And I'm gonna do AFX, go to my meters here to test it. And it's coming up there, go to my effects here, and I can see that it's coming up here as well. And that is perfect. All right, so now that's all good there. I can do that for each and every one, but I'm pretty confident that it works. And the next thing is I wanna test the signal on the 542, because the monogamma doesn't have meters. So I'm looking at my 542, I do see the green there, so that is good. We're gonna check the other channel, what's gonna be six. I don't see anything there. So basically what I have to do is troubleshoot. And so in order to troubleshoot, all I have to do is go back to my IO here. And let me go ahead and see what's going on here. So I'm going to insert five and six. And I'm looking here and I can see that it's on untold, but it's not reaching 13. So I just move this over here. It's probably the same thing for the SPL big because that is the thing that I created earlier. And now that should be good there. So just hit OK. And then now we just test that again. IO number six. And I see the signal there. And then also let's do eight. So I see the signal there. So that is all good there. And then last but not least, I just have to check really my summing mixer and then also my R verb. So let's go ahead and do output. And we're going to go ahead and do S1 here. Uh, see here, S1, and let me go ahead and unmute this here. Probably not gonna hear anything anyway, yep. And I can check that on my mix here. I'm gonna do line out. And I can see that it's all working there nice and good. And I'm just gonna do a multiple output just to show that it's, um, 
go ahead and route it to multiple outputs here. I'm just going to do 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. All right, so cool. I'm going to go ahead and open up the control panel. And I see that it is all routed to right there as well. So that's cool there. And then also, because I have two, I have stereo one and stereo two, if I hit this button here, you can see it's coming through 11 and 12. So that is working there. So that's the, a surefire way that it's working. And then I can also create two more buses as well and do aux tracks and go interface nine and 10. And it's interface 9 and 10. So we heard that. That works. And then I'm going to go ahead and mute this as well. And then 11, 12. And we see that the audio is coming in. So we're all good there. So now everything seems to be working and it's all good. All right. So there's one last thing I want to test here, which is going to be my reverb. So let's go ahead and create a click track. And we're going to go ahead and set the send to uh, an output, and that's supposed to say 16. So it's not in here, so let's go ahead and create that really quick here. I.O. and output, and it's going to be, should say 16 here. So let's go ahead and do new path. I'm going to do, call this the R verb, and it's going to be a mono, and again, that's going to be channel number 16 here. Oh, I think that's 16. That's good there. So now what I want to do is go ahead and do that. Running out of time. Got to work quick. Got to work quick. All right. Turn this up here. All right. So now I see that there's signal there. So now I have to create the return track from it. Now I just created the return. We call this R verb. that's down there. All right, so that is pretty much the video. Hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial. If you did, give it a thumbs up, like, subscribe, and make sure you guys share this uh, content with other people because I know there's other individuals that are struggling like yourself out there to find content like this. So share it on the community forums, wherever. It's your boy Young Fizz, aka Mr. Dope Status, and we will see you on the next video. Check the links below for other products and services such as mixing, mastering, and my machine course. Again, thank you for watching and we are out.